Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm just out here in the workshop. We had a nice 15 below zero day today here. No working outside so I'm in the workshop and I actually just finished a pro uh, project that I did not film and I didn't want that on film. Not at this time anyway. I might make a little video. I took a lot of pictures later at a later date but not yet. Right now I'm doing a uh, I'm going to do a box, or I'm going to attempt to do a box here with the dovetail corners. This here is wood that came out of Melissa's house when we uh, gutted it after the flood. This, I believe, I did a video before, and people said that this was southern yellow pine. This stuff is hard. It's heavy. It's amazing how, how hard it is for a pine going through the planer. It's almost like oak. It almost seems harder than oak when it goes through. So anyway, I'm trying to keep this outside gray looking. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm trying to get it planed down to three quarters of an inch. I'm almost there, and I thought, well, I better start this video, or you're going to miss out on this whole planing process. last project I did I was using the, the mini dovetail jig that thing worked really neat I'd never used the little one before that was kind of fun but I have to switch it out and put in the bigger one use the the mini jig you've got to use these gray I don't know what it is the board guide or whatever and then when you use the regular one you've got to use these black ones when you do this you have to have the same exact thickness board on top as what you have going in here that you're going to dovetail it sets the depth for it I already have this one adjusted because you can adjust everything in and out with the two uh, these two knobs and this back uh, little nut here. But you make sure that the board, which is flush with the face here, lines up with these here marks that they have. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cut the tails. When, I, when you do the tails, you make sure that the face of the board is facing the jig. And when you do the pins, you make sure that the face is facing away from the jig. And you got to take and put this and get it centered exactly the same, however it is on each side. Then you take and run that black piece that I put on there against the wood and tighten it down. Because then when you take and flip this jig over to do the pins, it automatically puts it over and you just put your board against the, your guide here and everything is already set up for you. When you get these, uh, the different templates for the dovetail jig, you get the ones for the mini and the ones for the regular. So I need to switch out my guide. I got to switch out the bit and everything. So, and just so I wouldn't forget when I got these, uh, the router bits, I wrote regular, not mini, and this is the one I use for the straight, which is what I'm doing right now. And this is pretty cool. It comes with its own uh, bit depth adjustment here. You just have to go down until it hits this thing, and that's where it's set at.
Now I just pull the board, I still keep that face against the actual jig. Slide it up here and we'll do the other side. go now I'll switch over and do the other the longer board the one the other one that's going to get the tails the tails done. do the pins. So to do the pins we have to flip this around. And remember like I said the, with the pin boards now we have to do the uh, outside part away from the jig. And you still you just shove it up against that same uh, the same little uh, guide over there on the left. It would be nice to just run two routers for this. I have several routers, but this one has the right plate. Everything is set up correctly here, so I always just switch it out. Because now we're going to have to not only put in a new guide, it has a little bit of a smaller opening to fit into the actual template. We also have to switch out the bit because this is a dovetail bit, and now we have to put in the straight bit. Yep, that turned out looking pretty cool. Since I want this box to have a really old look, like this one here, I, I've got this side cleaned up with the, uh, which I'm going to have to cut it shorter anyway, but all these are cut and you get a raw edge, but I left the front with that old edge on it. All beat up and everything so that I can now cut it to size for length here and for the width and it'll be a really old looking box but before we do that we need to get a bottom in this we need to get it glued and everything and nice and square because you never want to really cut your top until you get your box done because you can easily add an eighth here or an eighth there but not once you cut it
So these are two more pieces, uh, or one piece that I cut into two here from from Melissa's house down there. This is that more of that southern uh, yellow pine. And I'm, I'm doing this for the bottom. I, right now I planed it down to 5 8 I'm going to glue these together because I didn't have a board big enough. And uh, then I'll plane it down. I want it to be half inch in the end, but for right now you always want to glue it and keep it a little bit thicker so you can run it through the planer and it will clean up all that glue for you and everything will be really nice when you get done. Okay everyone, well that's it for today on this project. I got another one inside that I'm doing a little varnishing on, so I'm going to go work on that one now. Let that glue dry. Tomorrow we'll come out and sometime we'll get that bottom routed. We'll get that bottom put in. Then we can glue all this up. I'm going to have to be careful gluing that though. I don't want a ton of excess glue because I want to keep this as old looking as I can, so I don't want to be doing a whole lot of sanding. I'm going to touch it a little bit with the sander to get some light and dark spots. But um, I don't, like with most things, you can have the glue just oozing out of here because you're going to sand it way down anyway. So this one I'll have to be a little bit careful. Well, I'm back out here in the workshop this afternoon. This board here is all nice and dry. I can run that through the planer now. And I see this board, which was about four and a half feet long, but I cut it down to this, I don't know what it is, 18 inches now, this rough length. Anyway, if you look at that, you can see how it's got a cup to it now, it's warped. So I'm going to have to cut that one down the middle. I'm going to have to run it through the joiner and then glue that one together, otherwise I, I won't be able to use it. It's just, it's too much. And this side here, it looks good, but it doesn't have the, the edge right here that I'm looking for. I want that old, more rounded edge. So I think we'll start with that. Let's get that cut, get it glued, try to keep the least amount of glue from coming up to the top surface as possible. So at least that's done and it can start drying. See by cutting that, it's really taken a lot of that out. Keep the thickest part of the glue toward the bottom of the board. I mean there's going to be some on top I'm going to have to clean up. but.
I got that plane down to a half inch thick. Well, I've got my bit set up how I want it. I'm going to be going about 5 16 into the board, and then, of course, that half inch in the other way to recess the, the bottom up into the box. Just to make sure that I don't screw it up, I'm marking the edge that has to be routered. Now I will measure exactly what I got to cut this at. That's about as perfect as you can get right there. Well, like I said earlier, I don't want to have to do a lot of sanding on this because I want it to look old and rough. So, since these boards here, it pushes in this way, I'm only going to glue these here and only on the inside. I can cheat on the bottom with this one because that this piece that we're going to put in right here, I can put some screws in there to hold that. So I don't, you know, it's not going to get out of square or anything. I just want to try to eliminate a whole bunch of glue being on the face of this thing. I'm also using this tra translucent wood glue. Doesn't leave a glue line. Anything will help.
that actually turned out pretty good. I don't see any glue on the face. And I mean, there's some on the inside which I could care less about. It was just the outside that I was worried about. I'm actually going to pin a finish nail on the four corners here. Since this is all going to stay rough, you'll never really even know it's there. And it'll hold it together and really good. Since I don't have a ton of glue, I, I think there's plenty of glue, but just to be safe. Well, a few hours have went by now. This is definitely set up enough for me to do the next step. Well, the next thing I'm going to do on this box is I'm going to run some varnish on it. I thought about staining these here, which would be kind of scary because if you do, I would have to use like a driftwood, which is a brown with some gray in it. Uh, but if any of it bleeds onto the gray part, you know, you've ruined your whole, you can't sand it off if you're trying to keep this old look. So I'm just going to leave that how it is. I probably, I might end up staining on the inside. I'm not worried about that right now. I, I'm not worried about staining here either. I don't want it to bleed down onto my wood. And I want this thing just to look old. So I'm gonna start with a high gloss. I like doing things high gloss. We'll see how it looks. You can always put satin over gloss. So um, the first coat anyway is just gonna be kind of like a sanding sealer.
can't hardly even see that seam. The seam runs right there is where I cut it. And you, I line these two lines up, this crack, you can't even hardly tell. It's still not perfect. Like this side, it humps up just a little bit. This side has a little bit more, but it's humping the right way now. So I can, uh, I, there's just nothing I can do. It's just different thicknesses from one end to the other and everything. So definitely gonna look like an old top. I was gonna run this through the planer, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna take this glue off here a little bit, do a little bit right here and here so it sits smooth, and I'm gonna call that good. Well, I'll come back later and put on another coat. I've now put four coats on the outside. Last night I went out late and put the second coat on. This morning I brought it in the house and put a third coat on. And at that time I put one, one coat on inside. Now I just put that fourth coat on the outside and I'm putting the second coat on the inside here. Trying to fill these cracks up all the way with varnish or polyurethane is what I'm using. But well, I have the box back out in the workshop today. It uh, got down to 16 below last night with a wind chill of 38 below. Right now, the high for today now is going to be 6 below zero. <laughs> it's about 10 below out there right now, so. The wood stove feels pretty good out here. With this box now, I have six coats of varnish on the outside. Uh, the inside, I think I've got a total of three. I think that's all the inside's gonna need. And at this point in the box is when you kinda have to make decisions. I want this to just be an old looking, simple box. So I don't wanna add too much um, flair to it or anything. I went through a couple different things, like the way I have it now. This edge hangs over, so when I after I hinge this, I can just grab it here and open it. Uh, a totally different look to the box is just sliding it back like this and making it a flush box. But if it's a flush box, then you're going to have to have some sort of a hasp or something to grab onto so you can open it. I mean, you could grab it here, but it's just more obvious when it's sticking out like this. So I've decided I'm just going to let it stick over like this. I like it. Um, I, I, I don't want to change anything of, of the look of the box the way it is right now. If you're making this box and you want it to be a little bit more fancy, not quite so old, you might want to take and put some of these corners on here. You can just do the four bottom corners. kind of adds a little bit. If you want to do more, you could do the top corners also kind of makes it a little cuter and stuff but it does cover up some of the dovetail and it also uh, you have to have it sticking over like this because it looks to me a little goofy when you go back like this and you've got the four corners another thing I thought about we could do something like this if we have the corners you could have this on there, but I just, I, I, when I look back and looked at this, it's just a little bit too much. Uh, this box is, you know, if I would have done this, if I would have went ahead and planed everything so that you get this beautiful wood grain like this, then having something like that gold thing here, just pretend this was the front of the box, 
that looks better but not when I'm staying with the gray and the brown and everything on the outside. So that brought me to the next thing. Okay, if I just want to have this old looking box, uh, I'm going to need to have some kind of handles to hold it. So if I was going to go with the uh, gold type of highlights, I could have easily done a handle like this, which even like now would have still looked good. But what I'm just looking for, I think I'm going to take a piece of wood. I'm just going to cut a little piece have two screws, get it uh, varnished like this here, so it's just two chunks of wood that you hold on to to move the box. I'm actually just going to cut it out of this board because you see how it's got these chewed up uh, corners and everything? That'll match the rest of the box perfect. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to definitely make the two little handles here for the sides and then I'm going to get a hinge on this uh, on this door. I thought about going with a continuous hinge. I call them a piano hinge, but I decided I'm just going to use two separate hinges. I mean, none of this is, uh, and nothing here is really even, so it'll be easier to use two hinges. And also over time, if you get any moisture or anything going on in these, they can kind of rust and you have some trouble. If you guys are building a box like this, uh, it's made out of wood, wood warps, wood moves, and these hinges, they're not real forgiving. So if you can get by with it, and on this box we can, because the perfect thing about this box is it's not perfect, take and put a spacer or two in between your door, or yeah, the top door here and the actual box, just to lift it up a little bit. So when you put this hinge, I don't know how many times I've done it where you build a box, everything seems perfect, you screw your hinge in, you close the door, and it sort of binds, and the, the, the front part won't quite shut, so it's like dit, 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 dit. So uh, if you space it, it'll give you that little space, everything can move, you've got room to, to kind of, I don't know, just kind of some room for uh, any type of error that might come up in the future. And then before you uh, drill and put your, your hinge in, you never know if your box is exactly square or if this is exactly square, but since you're always looking at the front of the box, line your front up so it's perfect. Like this one here has, I don't know, a 32nd maybe hanging over on each side. We're back here. It's pretty flush over here, and on this side I almost have an eighth inch that's hanging over the, the one part. And that is because this board over on this side it just the way it was is wider over here than it is in the back but all I care about is what people are going to see in that front so line that up perfectly from side to side and then go ahead and drill your hole when I do the hinges like this I always do one hole at a time and put the screw in because the screw is tapered this part is tapered if your hole isn't completely centered exactly, it's going to move that hinge a little bit. If you have two holes drilled, both of them are going to be moved. So I can put this one in, it sets where that hinge is going to go. Now I can go ahead and drill this one.
Well, that's how I like to see the wood bin filled up when it's going to be 20 below again tonight and a high tomorrow of, I don't know what it was, 6 below or 9 below. Nice to have a lot of wood. Well, I put two coats of varnish on these, uh, or sealer, whatever you want to call it, finish, on these handles, and they're pretty dry now. So I am going to do one more coat over the whole entire box, so then it'll, I'll be able to get all this one more time. I'm going to run inside for a little bit, let this dry. Once you get to this many coats on here, the coats dry pretty fast, so that's kind of nice. That first coat you put on that soaks in, it takes forever. Well, I just come out here to check this, and it's getting there. It's still a little bit tacky. Another hour, and it'll be ready to be brought inside. But I wanted to say, like, this is uh, supposed to look like an old box, and if, a, if you, you would have done this in, like, satin, it would have even been... Um, even an older look, not so shiny. But this is for another project that I'm doing that I, I have done already that, that um, I have not done a video on. You guys will get information on that in a few months or whatever, but uh, for, I, I needed this box to be shiny, so and you'll understand that later. But anyway, it's almost done. I will end up putting uh, like a tax on the bottom or like some little things that you put underneath so it'll sit off the ground maybe an eighth inch or so. Just because if you end up sitting these boxes on a concrete floor, it's going to suck in moisture. Always nice to have that little air gap underneath it. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. The antique-looking old box here, looks like an old box anyway, is complete. I'll see you guys on the next video.